what's up guys it's Kelly and welcome to Velvet Library in 2020. If you find yourself enjoying this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up it really helps me out and if you're new here and would like to see more of me then please subscribe. I'm filming this on my phone I'm trying something new I was halfway through filming a different video and my camera battery died so I was like chilled this is why I have a spare you know when to put the spare in and that died within about two seconds as well so clearly i am nailing this youtube 2020 thing so this is going to be split into my reading goals my booktube goals and then just like my business goals so i'm not going to ramble too much let me just get into all of those as for reading goals you guys might know by now i don't set a book goal for the year i set a page goal I find the book goal a little bit too restrictive just because it gets to the end near the end of the year and I am nowhere near achieving my goal and then I'm like oh I have to read short books so that I can reach it and I don't want to do that I don't want to be chasing this goal by reading stuff just because it's short and ignoring the stuff that I actually want to read when you know I enjoy fantasy so I have a lot of books on my TBR that are like a thousand pages or just sometimes you just want to read what you want to read and that book might be 400 pages might be 500 pages and you don't just want to read something that's 200 pages for the sake of achieving a goal so at least with a page goal the amount of time that i put into reading something puts me that much closer to my goal whereas if i'm aiming to read a certain number of books i might spend this much time on one book and this much time on another book but they contribute the same towards me achieving my goal. So my page goal for this year is 20,000. That was my page goal for 2019 as well, which I didn't achieve, but I am confident I can do it this year. 2019 was not my best reading year, so I'm pretty confident that I can actually achieve that this year. I didn't, I wasn't far. I was probably about five or six books away from completing it. So I think that that's very doable for me. Then last year I made some goals that like I wanted to read a non-fiction book, a graphic novel, manga, and a classic, and a bunch of other things every month, and do you know how many times I achieved any of those things? Like not even a handful. I read one non-fiction book, I read two classics, and I read one graphic novel, so yeah, that went well. So I'm not putting anything that concrete onto my goals this year, I'm just kind of generally saying that I want to read more classics, more non-fiction, more manga and graphic novels, and if I read two non-fiction books this year, I'm achieving my goal of reading more. So there's that. Another goal I'm setting for myself is that I want to read for five hours a week. So I like the idea of doing the whole like reading for half an hour a day thing, but it's not feasible for me. Like there are days where I just, I get home from work and my brain physically cannot compute looking at a page because I'm that brain dead from work. So it just, it doesn't work for me. But I figure five hours across a week is pretty doable. It's what, like 45 minutes a day and I can do that. So I normally read on my lunch break, which gives me a good like half an hour a day anyway, but that also means that if I don't feel like reading on my lunch break or I don't feel like reading in the evenings and I completely don't read at all for a day, but the next day I feel like reading for an hour and a half, it's fine. So yeah, I, I would like to read a little bit at least every day, but rather than mis restricting myself and being like, I want to read this much every day, I am setting weekly goals and I feel like that's just a lot more sustainable for me. Then another really, really, really big goal of mine <laughs> is I want to finish the year with a smaller physical TBR than I've started it with. I know a lot of people who are doing something called the Conquering the TBR Challenge, which basically means that they're not going to buy any new books until they've read all of their unread books and I find that extremely admirable. It is not gonna happen. I have about 750 books. I know, it's obscene. I, I know, okay, I know. My cat's come to visit, which is great because he's adorable, but also he's probably going to disrupt this very delicate structure that I have going on. Okay, he's just sitting on my camera now. That's cool, that's cool. Um. There's, gonna, there's definitely going to be some camera shake 
and you will probably hear him licking himself. Yes, so I have about 750 unread books. Let's say on average I read 70 books a year, which is pretty average for me. That's almost 11 years worth of reading material. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wait 11 years to buy a new book. It's, it's not gonna happen. But I thought that this would be a good way of me getting my physical TBR down. So basically how it'll work is I'm not going to be allowed to buy new books unless I've read more than that off my physical TBR. So like if I read five books off my TBR and I go to a book sale, I could buy up to four books, but not more than that. I have tried this in the past where I was only going to be allowed to buy one new book for every five books that I read, which worked really well until I was like, oh, well, I'll, I'll read, let me just buy these five books and I'll read 25 books. Yeah. So I, I, I can't buy things proactively. I have to buy things retroactively. Is that the word? So basically I can only buy new stuff until I've already read that many books off my TBR. The catch is going to come in that I get a lot of books from work. I get a lot of books for free. I do. I get ARCs from publishers sent to me and also I get books at work. So those books are also going to count to increasing my physical TBR because they will be increasing my physical TBR. So if I read five books off my TBR but I acquire three new ARCs, that means I can only buy one new book. So I think this is going to be a good thing for both my wallet and for my TBR and my shelves and the amount of space that I have in this teeny tiny little apartment. Oh my gosh, my cat is trying to climb between a book and the top of my bookcase. This is not gonna work. So yes, that is the plan. I want to end the year with a smaller physical TBR than I started with. However, as things stand, this is going to be pretty difficult to track because I don't know exactly how many books I have on my TBR. I think it's somewhere in the region of about 750, but I could be very wrong. There is no way that I can accurately do this without counting all of the unread books that I have. So Becca from Becca and the Books, who you all know I love, has for the last two years at least, and possibly before that, done a video where she shares all of the unread books on her shelves. And I think I'm going to do the same. <laughs> So I might not do it in the same format as her, she takes all the books off her shelf and says I've got this book, this book, this book, this book, which I might not do. I also, as I'm doing this, think it would be a good time and a good opportunity to catalogue all the books that I own. So I want to get an app, or I might just use Goodreads even, and just like scan all the books that we own into that, which I will, is going to be a very lengthy process and also I will probably be doing it mostly at night so I might not film myself doing it. I might just take photos of all the books as I do it and then put them together into like a little stop motion video with some music and a counter that ticks off my TBR of shame. There are just gonna be so many, so many angle changes in this video while my cat decides what he wants to do with his life. So that seems like a good place to move on to channel goals. Okay, I've got him on my lap now, so let's hope he just stays here while I film the rest of this video. So I have decided this year that I'm not going to set any goals that are reliant on other people. I normally set like a subscriber goal for the year and I've just decided that it's not a good idea for me anymore. This is absolutely not an indictment to people who do that. I think it's great if that inspires you and helps you work towards something and honestly it does inspire me and helps me work towards it and I super enjoy watching other people share their channel goals like their subscriber goals and things like that because I'm just like yes girl go for it but for me at the moment it's just not the best way for me to do things for my well-being and my happiness and my mental health I realised I had to find another way of doing things because when I don't achieve those goals it just brings me down. So I am not setting any goals that rely on other people which obviously means that I can't set things like subscriber goals because I 
can do the things, you know? I can make content that I'm excited about, and I can upload regularly, and I can promote it every which way till Sunday, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you guys are going to subscribe to me. So I am not doing that to myself, basically. Instead, what I'm focusing on is just uploading the content on making things that I'm excited about, on doing it regularly. So that's what my goals are focused on. So first and foremost, I really want to just consistently upload one video a week on a set day, and that is going to be Thursdays for the foreseeable future. Um, no reason why Thursdays, really. I just, I feel like it's as good a night as any. So I was like, Thursday. So yes, my aim is to upload a video every Thursday. And one video a week is doable. That's probably, on average, what I did last year. I probably published about 52 videos last year. But there were weeks where I would publish two or three. There were also weeks where I would publish zero. So this year the goal is, without fail, to upload a video every week. As I say this, I know that in January I'm probably going to miss one because we're going away and we're going to be travelling on Thursday. So that I might upload on the Wednesday, but I'll keep you guys posted. That's a really, really big one for me. It's just to nail that consistency. And rather than focusing on churning out a lot of content, just focus on getting the regularity there. I also have a series that I am super excited to start and I really hope you guys will enjoy. I don't want to share what it is until it's quite ready, which I'm hoping will be in the next month or two. I am so so excited because it combines books with one of my favourite things and I think it's going to be a really great addition to my channel and something that will be really unique to me. I also finally am ready to start my TBR game so I have had the idea for my TBR game for probably about a year and for the first like nine months the problem was logistical. I didn't have the game that I needed to make my TBR game. I love how you can just see this head like bobbing up and down. So I didn't have the game piece that I needed for my game. Then I got the game piece I needed and the last few months of last year were just too crazy and there was no way that I could set my TBR game up. So I'm setting it up now and also I finally figured out the logistics of it because also the way I had originally intended to structure it didn't really work with my reading life, so I found a different way of doing it which I think will work really well. On that note, I will not be doing monthly TBRs anymore, so the TBR game that I mentioned is going to be seasonal. I'm going to do a summer TBR, then an autumn, a winter, and a spring TBR, so I'll be doing them every three or so months. There are a couple of reasons for this. One of them being that I am a big mood reader, so I'll often set a TBR and not feel like reading the books. Also, I'll set a TBR and then a readathon will come up, and I'll be like, oh, well, I would actually rather read the books for the readathon. Or I'll set a TBR and then that'll be the month that I suddenly get like six arcs that I need to read. So, monthly TBRs just don't actually work that well for me. What I'm going to be doing instead is setting like a six to eight book TBR but that I'm intending to read over the course of three months so that gives me plenty of time to read those books but also to read any books that might come my way for review, any books that I just spontaneously feel like reading or any books for readathons that come up. It also gives me the freedom to do TBRs for readathons because I always feel really dumb when I upload a TBR and then like a week later I'm like, just kidding, this is my new TBR because now I'm doing a readathon. So yeah, I'll be having my TBR game seasonally and then I will do TBRs as readathons come up. Which brings me to, I want to do more readathons. This actually probably should have gone in the reading portion rather than the channel portion, but whatever. I would really like to do more readathons in 2020. I think that they're such a great way to meet people in the community, to make friends, and just to feel a part of something, which is what I've been missing in the last year or so. So I definitely want to do more readathons, and I want to vlog more, so I want to do, go back to doing weekly reading vlogs, and then also to doing like themed reading vlogs, so either for readathons or 
I really like when people do like a week-long readathon just for themselves where they read all romance books or all horror books or even like a 24-hour readathon and vlogging that so weekly vlogs and then definitely readathon and themed vlogs as well and then my last channel goal is something that might not even come about this year because it does depend on how things go in the first half of the year so I'm not even thinking about this for the next six months this is a if I can be super consistent if I can be really on it with uploading every month and being really happy with the kind of content that I'm putting out there then in the second half of the year I would like to start uploading a second video every week where I talk about musicals I love musicals I am obsessed with theatre I am a huge theatre nerd my <laughs> I did my Spotify wrapped or like I looked at my Spotify wrapped and you know they give you your top five genres mine was like alternative metal and then three different words for show tunes I really really love musicals and I want to talk about it so I've started subscribing to like musical theatre YouTube channels and that content really excites me and I really want to do that sort of thing so possibly in the second half of the year if I can make booktube really stick for myself in the first few months I want to start introducing some musical theatre content it will be a second video so it's not going to take the place of any bookish content it'll just be something that I add I think that's pretty much it for my channel goals so lastly I just wanted to briefly talk about my business goals some of you might know that Velvet Library isn't just my like YouTube and Bookstagram name, I do actually have a business under that name that has been kind of dead for the last few months, but 2020 is the year that it resurrects and that I start really focusing on it. So to start with, I do have a Redbubble store, which I made a couple of sales on last year, like nothing major, but enough to make me feel like it's not a complete waste of time. So I want to upload a new design on Redbubble every month, which I'm really excited about because I think it's a great way to make like static income because I just need to design something and then they have to do all of the work really, apart from the design work, which obviously is a lot of work, but they have to do like all the manufacturing, all the shipping, they have to deal with it if the customer's not happy. So I think that'll be really good for me. And then I also make like bookish jewellery and bookmarks and I really want to get back into that. I want to make tote bags so I really want Velvet Library as a business to grow in 2020 and I want to start producing more and hopefully making some sales but again not making any sales related goals because those again are reliant on other people best thing I can do is just make a quality product that I think people will want and hopefully the people will come and they will buy it and they will make me lots of money so that I can be self-employed. <laughs> so yeah just on the Velvet Library as a business side of things I really want to just grow it and create more products so that as well is I want to relaunch the shop that's the first goal. I want to be actively promoting it so I want to do something every day to be promoting it and I want to, once I've relaunched it with the products that I currently have, I want to start a new, I want to upload a new product or introduce a new product every month. So I think I'm going to spend January just getting things sorted on that and my goal is to have the shop relaunched and like ready to promote stuff by February. So that is pretty much it for my reading, booktube and business goals for 2020. Please let me know in the comments what your goals are or feel free to share your videos with me if you've done them. I get so inspired by other people talking about their goals. As I said, like even if your goals are things like your subscriber count, I want to know that. This stuff just jazzes me up so much. I love the new year. I'm such a hoe for the whole like new year, new me thing. So I want to know your resolutions. I want to know your goals. I want to know why 2020 is going to be the best year ever for you so leave me links leave me comments i want to hear from you guys 
thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this once again please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i can only do that with one hand because the other is currently sitting under my gorgeous little baby cat and i will see you all again very soon bye i will have my unread tv i'm not going to set any goals my life is grounded in a